I don't know if you can remember back to 2012 and the Occupy Wall Street mu movement, but it was this, uh, you know, decentralized multi-region, multi-city uh, protest against economic inequity, banks, um, you know, rally against, you know, corporations. Um, and it was popping from uh, September 2011 to, uh, I believe, uh, through roughly, you know, spring of 2012. And, you know, again, it was the, the element of being decentralized, that there was no leader, there was no hierarchy. It was just people, um, you know, camping out, um, in front of companies, in front of town halls, in city squares, in certain places, um, as a protest, you know, to wealth inequity, um, and you know, the the sort of chant uh, or logo of people that partook in partook in this was "We are the 99 percent." So it was a direct challenge to the uber rich, um, you know, ruling ruling class, you know, and. Um, it's pretty interesting, and if you really want to think about, um, you know, S South Park, when we watch this episode, 1%, uh, is the media's portrayal, um, all media's portrayal, uh, you know, at least mainstream media, CNN, Fox News especially, how they portrayed the Wall Street, um, the uh, Occupy Wall Street movement was basically in this, like, where they showed the most wild, crazy hippies and like, you know, the white people with dreadlocks and just like the, the, the far, far extreme of it and not focusing on people who spouse, you know, all of the same ideas. So they, they tend to radicalize it in a negative way where people saw it as just a bunch of um, people without jobs, you know, uh, who who just, you know, were sad about or upset with their place in the world and they didn't have enough that they were just wanted something for nothing type type shit, you know. And a lot of that went back to the media's portrayal of the Occupy uh, movement. So it's sort of, you know, um, not a very positive one. Um, so we're going to watch this episode 1%. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty good episode. Um, it's got two storylines. Uh, uh, a weird, a weird one um, with Cartman and his uh, his dolls, um, but the main the main storyline is like it deals with the president's physical fitness ex um, exam and um, you know uh, ninety nine percent of the class is physically fit, but Cartman is so out of shape that he brings down their total score and everybody's punished because of it. Okay. So what this episode is, and I want you to think about it when we watch it, is how is not only it a, a critique of wealth concentration, the fact that most of the wealth is held by a very small amount of percentage of people, but also how it's a critique of that critique, how it's making fun of people that critique banks and, and, and the rich and uh, critique corporations like many of your professors. Um, you know, how are they making fun of that critique in this? And how do they bring in and sort of parody and make fun of people? So what we see in here is class warfare at the, at the end uh, between the third and fourth graders, I, I believe, um, you know, which is, again, a parody on, like, class divisions um, and social stratification within classes. So um, what we have here is Occupy Red Robin. And that's, how they, that's how they make fun of um, Occupy Wall Street. So they kind of, like, you know, and then at the end, they're like, oh, well, I won't give it away, um, you know, but in this Cartman clearly represents the 1%. Now, 1% that's out of shape, but also just the one percenters um, in, you know, an economic sense, okay? Um, what you see in this, though, and we'll talk about this in the, the weeks that come, is the sort of libertarian philosophy of Matt and Trey. The fact um, of the matter is, you know, they um, they have a very, I guess they're fiscally conservative. If you ever hear anybody say that they're fiscally um, conservative, is like basically you know you can work hard and get what you want in the, in, in this world. As part as part of it, it's also you know less government interference. You know um, is better. Like no government control. Um, you know um, so just think about how this is is very much um, you know. Uh, a critique of, you know, people who 
are opposed to economic inequity because obviously Matt and Trey are almost fucking billionaires, you know? So um, their view on people protesting wealth disparity is clearly from the view of fucking capitalists, right? Of one percenters because they are in the one percent. So how do they kind of break that down um, in, in this episode? And, uh, uh, you know, how do they p- parody the movement, the Occupy movement, and how do they also like show it as ridiculous in their in their own way or try to? Um, and so, uh, you know, think about Marx, think about um, you know class stratification, think about economic inequity, and watch the one percent, and then we'll be back. All right, so there's a lot going on in this, a lot of parody, a lot of satire. Um, obviously, the guys are critiquing um, people who critique wealth and equity and how they do it. Um, I love the part where you, you see Anonymous come into the Occupy Red, uh, Red Robin and you have the hippie playing, playing the bongos. I mean, again, that is kind of how the media, the mainstream media, was portraying The Occupy movement is this sort of like, you know, dumb fucking hippie, um, you know, dumb liberal movement. Um, You know, people who who want something for nothing type type shit, you know. Um, This is pretty funny. It's pretty funny in that in that sense, um, how how they do that um, and how they, you know, uh, use scatological humor. I mean, um, you know, uh, when they're talking about movements in the bathroom, I mean, that's really like a scatological critique of the movement, um, which I think, I think was pretty, pretty, pretty great. Um, I think you have a lot of carnival-esque, like them, you know, at Occupy, uh, Red Robin, that's a very carnival type, type moment. And then you have like, um, you know, the scatological humor that comes into play. And then think about grotesque body is really Michael Moore. Um, how, what they do to like undermine his authority is portray him as like this grotesquely obese, like nasty fucking uh, person who shows up and yells. So I don't know. It's pretty pretty interesting, um, you know, take on class and economic inequity. Um, I don't know what you what you think about it. I'd love to hear more about about your thoughts on it in like our happy hour. Because I mean, again, like Matt and Trey are libertarian, or at least libertarian philosophically, as well as I believe politically. At least Trey is or was, um, you know, which is basically, you know, uh, you know, in this in the sense of economy is to like yeah like let the economy handle itself, you know, very much the, the viewpoint. The economy will figure itself out, you know, uh, work, work hard and you can get anywhere, you know, just like Matt and Trey did. I don't know, it's pretty interesting, but 